function, right? So I have, I've been in the information security uh, domain for over a decade now, right? Over 1.5 decades. I've worked in for clients and customers as well as organizations like Symantec, Microsoft, Emphasis, SLK. Right now, I'm the CISO, DPO, CRO for the SLK, which is right there on the seventh floor. So we are just right in the same campus. Uh, so I manage the entire security for the for the group as well as for the bank that we have. So we do a lot of security consulting, we do management, we do manage SOC, phishing, anti-phishing, so on and so forth. And uh, I speak at a lot of events. I do author a lot of articles, so you can just put my name and that's my website as well there. Uh, the latest one that I've written is on the microservices, securing the microservices, so if you want to read get a glimpses of that, you can go through that as well and certifications and so on and so forth. So I have kept this uh, session in a manner that what is, so the information security industry itself is leapfrogging, right? Uh, especially in the Indian context because India was a little slow in adopting security practices as against what you see in the US, right? In the US, Europe, they are already far ahead of the curve. So what happened was that we are leapfrogging from 1x to 4x, which means now that there is a plethora of technology available, as a cyber security professional or as an information security professional, it could be technical, non-technical, both, I would want to really spend time talking with you and you may throw a lot of questions, I'm making it quite interactive, so please be, feel free to ask any kind of question that will be coming into your mind because I have a lot of exposure, so I spend a lot of my time with the CRO, CXO community, right, and the CISO community. Probably some of your organization CISOs I'll be knowing with, so we talk, we discuss, right? Could be the Vodafone or Sears or, or Deloitte or any any of these guys who are actually taking those decisions of five year, next five years plan or ten year plan for you guys. That impacts you and me both. So the questions I would expect a lot of questions from you as to how do you as a professional would take some of those steps that would help you get an edge over others. So that would be my keen focus, right? And I'll give you some bit of light also on how organizations are doing now and what is expected from the industry, right? So what are your key challenges? So today you had done a, a good session, Glenn took a very good session on, on machine learning, but what is that you're learning? That is more important, right? Machine learning is anyways learn. What is that you're learning so that you take one uh, edge over the others, right? So that's what I believe in and, and therefore we have a huge team and I speak in a lot of other conferences as well in Pune so I just will connect there again. So cyber security A is a very growing market, okay? So trust me one thing, perhaps a decade back when we joined security was still at a very nascent stage, we were only endpoint guys. Security means antivirus, right? So, so that was, was, was all of it. Nothing else than endpoint, right? Security means the management will only understand it's an antivirus, right? So that was one point. Uh, the second point was security was not growing in that particular pace, which we needed. All all the people were going in software development, testing, and other domains, while security was not moving at fa fast pace. But today, if you really look at security is growing, security market itself is growing in leaps and bounds. So thankfully you guys are in the same zone from an industry standpoint. A lot of industries are sunsetting. I hope you know, right? A lot of industries are sunsetting, but this is at the peak. So it's at the state where it's actually growing. It's not hit as its peak yet. It will one fine day. But most of the guys you will see a lot of developers, right? To fish, you will get hundreds of developers. But to find a security is a very daunting task, if you ask me. And we do hire a lot, so security, getting the right candidate itself is a tough thing. So that's one. Changing in the business practices as somebody spoke about the uh, technology building red team. See, red team was not a concept, but it is now, we are building, so organizations are building blue team, red team, means what? Hiring more people, right? With a particular skill set. You have GDPR, so you have a privacy also now, right? So we have privacy guys, companies are adopting blue team, red team, they are implementing privacy, they are implementing InfoSec, compliance, RBI, mandated CISOs. So this domain is going to see a good growth, but technology is also evolving. So you should not only learn about antivirus and doing a bit of malware analysis and all of that, but you need to put your footprint in learning new technologies like crypto, 
or microservices or cloud and so on and so forth. So learning that is also important. So it goes beyond IT's capability, which means InfoSec is not only IT, right? How many of you spend only speaking with IT? So it's not only IT, cyber information security has has actually broadened its horizon because it comes in legal, contract, in software, in physical security, uh, in in cloud, in so on and so forth, even in the business. Right? So security today is not only seen as merely a IT security. Right? If you talk to a management, he will say, hey, you know what cyber sec security means? No, antivirus and not bus. We already have security, you know, firewall antivirus, that's all security is all about, right, for most of the non-security community. But now if you see, they would, I, I bet if you talk to any senior guys, a CFO or a CXO, now if you ask them security, they are going to talk about GDPR, because it was so well marketed, that security, ha, GDPR hai, GDPR, some, some things they will talk about GDPR, I can guarantee you that. So, that's what it's all about and enterprise needs to develop and implement based on governance strategy. So board level management commitment who are the heads and, and, and beyond. Board level commitment is what we are thriving for. So that's what it is. So that's how the traditional delivery. If you see checklist based auditing, how many of you do checklist based auditing? Right, most of you guys do. So how do you add value? Right. How do we add value is what is important. See, that's what CISOs, audit, chief auditors and all, all of these guys are looking at. That somebody, your managers might have given you an audit checklist. Right? You read those checklists, bas ho karo. Na kar diya ho gaya, right? How do you add value? So how do you think will you will add value? Tell me. Can anyone tell me one point? So, right, that's a good point. What else? How would you add value? So, that is a part of the process, which means you will talk to that guy. But to add value, how would you add value as an auditor, InfoSec auditor? What do you think? Can anyone tell me? Uh, he's from my team, so he would know. <laughs> So what I think that whenever we go for audit, go with an open mind rather than having this checklist approach. Checklist will help you to validate at the end of the audit like whether we have missed it up with any of the points. Yeah, and then so that should true. be the yeah. approach. And then learning the business first is more important, <laughs> right? If you are let's say from telecom, learn that business first before you do the audit because you come from InfoSec. They don't care about InfoSec, right? You first have to tell boss, when I am doing an audit, that guy is thinking, what value is he creating? Oh, the user awareness is not done, or XYZ, you just give the random things, copy paste and then shy away, right? So the other guy's mindset is, first is that team, is it adding value? See, it percolates up. Because if you add value, the head of that guy will now talk to his peer, the CIOs and everybody. He will say, you know what, boss, my team has identified 10 vulnerabilities or whatever, 10 audit findings, that could jeopardize your business. That's when he gets attention from the CEO. That's how he will fund more to you and that's how you will get your increment. To be very honest. That's what the game is. So I'll be sharing some, with some very important secrets, right? So that you also understand what value you need to bring in your organization. If you don't bring value, your bosses will not get any funding from, from the manager. So that's most important piece. Yeah, go ahead. I, 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 would, I, would, I would speak their language of risk. Yeah, exactly. Basically, instead of conveying risk in our language, we can convey the next uh, risk in the customer's language. Right, exactly. They, 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 need, they understand their language. They don't understand what you're speaking. So, add value. That's what is what knowledge based value system, right? So, if you're talking to a cloud guy, learn cloud first some certifications or learning or whatever and then try add value to him and then sit with him. This is what I am trying to find out, you know. That's what we need to do and collaboration. So most of you guys might be working in silos, you are not working in terms of collaboration. Security often guys who are a little more experienced working in organization would know that security was often seen as a disabler, right. They are not seen as an enabler. 
So that is what we need to really learn to collaborate with people, to, to, to understand, have friendly relationship with them. Audit obviously they see as a stick in the eye. But then adding more collaborative approach and learning from each other would be the only thing that can take your organization and your team, yourself, your management ahead. So that's one thing. So knows only InfoSec technology. So as we were seeing, right, ML, AI. How many of you have spent time in that, right? That was talking to Milan as well, right? We are working on projects, so my team would know, right? Some of my team members, how keenly we are working on prototypes to build some AI projects. So I encourage my team, let's say, to work with some teams, find some prototype, I will fund you for some projects, and so on and so forth. So learn other technologies, not your technologies only. So if you might be interested in red team technology, hack theming, and so on and so forth. But if you don't know that technology, how will you find vulnerabilities or business issues, security issues? See, it's business first. So you know the analogy I tell to people, I don't know how many of you know. So there are two analogies I always talk to the management, right? One is, uh, obviously we are watchdogs, we cannot be lab dogs, right? That's one. And second thing is, in security, you don't tell, so your Business is saying, hey, you know what, I want to cruise at 200 miles per hour. So you would say, hey, no, 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 there's this risk or that risk and uh, the, your tire could be punctured and there's no enough this and, and blah, blah, blah. In fact, what you should tell is, okay, I'll permit you to go 200 per hour, miles per hour, but take so many controls. Install this and then you go ahead. Which means now the approach has changed, right? You are actually enabling the business. You're saying, okay, you want to go? Go. But install these four things or do this four things right and we'll go together right so that's the kind of approach that we need to really really bring and business focus that's the really really critical thing which is client closer to the customers right first talk to your customer or customers customer to understand what is their issue you might be you know really really trying to solve your internal uh, issues right but first, see what is what is the client that the client wants, right? Everybody has a client, and client would be client's client. So let's say InfoSec, your client is your internal customer, but your client is also that guy's customer, who is customer's customer. How is that impacting is also equally important. Okay. So any questions till now on these topics? Any questions? Just feel free. Just ask any questions that. That kind of come in your mind or whatever. Okay, but yeah. how to uh, uh, how to promote a better practice in the first kind of exercise that I alpha mean no memory eight character is is the way to go. So if if we say as 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 this is a practice. Make it ten or twelve or whatever. So the common portion of the type is say, say, show me in standard if it is eight, then why should I go 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 go, go for twelve or ten? So, right, so right. how to right. how to convince that? I think how you need to convince this. I think how the international community is working, especially in the US, because I do work with a lot of banking CISOs, right? Yeah. They are shying away from, I think most of the banks are going away from passwords. They don't want passwords only. Because you know, I know, passwords are the weakest link. So instead of, see, there is a standard, your policies are written by the CISOs and the community, they have to follow. Thoda work follow hota hai, right? Sabko karna hai, HR policy. You are very casual. You have to wear formal. Kya logic is There is no logic. But you have to follow. You can't go and break on so and so time, whatever. Oh, it's a logic. Hai. Sabke, you know, everybody has so, a little bit of rules that you have to follow. But innovation, that's what I'm trying to say. Have you worked with your vendors or work with so many vendors are there, right? To identify what if I have no passwords? Can I work on that technology? The US community is striving towards it. They don't want passwords. They are saying, okay, can I have retina scan or can I have so mechanism through which I have no password, which technically you know what will happen. That's what I'm trying to see. It will impact so many service desks, businesses, password, 
change, password change, that is going to get impacted sooner or later because there are technologies that are coming their way. So most of them are in prototype stage. So that's my point. One thing is, yes, you need to talk and collaborate and make them convince that well, this is policy I have to follow a little bit. And how to convince them is one of the key points that you Infosec guys really need to have very good controlling skill, right? They need to be very good psychologists or how to talk to people and understand. That's very important piece. But second thing is, tell them I don't want only this password. Heli khatam, right? But these are the vendors. Put it. I'm telling you the business guys will be very happy and security guys will also get the budget. Password in here. Your CEO will be the most happiest guy because he will probably get rid of 50, 60 people, then resources gone and so. So that's what I'm saying. See, lower end of the curve business is vanishing. But how will you get up the curve if you know that next technology? So keep pace with that. That's the point. And no competitive edge. See, this is very, very important point. And I was talking to uh, a couple of CISOs, CIOs, just last week on Thursday, right? So what they said was most, and this was quite interesting, that security was never seen as a competitive edge. They said if you have a product, hai, if you sell it to the client, security is not a difference, right? But today, profit, it is, matter. profit matters, profit. right? But today, as a customer, if I'm buying a product, the CISOs are the ones who are driving the sales along with the sales. The reason is security matters. So if you if your product has 10 certification or multiple security features, then customers are going to buy your product. That is what I call as a competitive edge. I mean, I mean the simplest ex example I got up, I used to convince is like you Everyone will be willing to pay more for, for an iPhone than an yeah exactly. So that's the easiest way to get to cloud networks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone will, will pay more for an iPhone Absolutely. than for any. any so, so that that shift is happening. Companies are buying products which are secure. So if your product has security, what edge will be Uska security nahi hai. Which means. The other side, the customer ka CISO hai, he would not give a word if there is no security. So if you see CISOs are getting empowered from the product side and from the customer side, both. They are getting competitive edge because of, so that's one of the key things that you need to keep in mind. So building a healthy security culture, see one of the key thing is the second one, which I kept. KRS, how many, how many of the companies have, Infosec is not our responsibility versus everyone's responsibility of Sunao, right? But, if you see at the top, is that build it to the KRA of that function? No. Then he's not going to care to shit about it, right? So building that is very important. It's obviously at a CIO level decision, but that is one thing that should happen at a very high level. More collaboration, rewards and awards. So we have a body program in our offices. So we say, hey, you know what? If anybody comes with any vulnerability or whatever, inside, outside, we reward them. <coughs> kind of have a program so we give constant effort, build culture and community upbringing. So what is Hyrofrat community is doing, right? So we are spending time. So this is a, a, a session for us to kind of give back to the community, right? So we spend time building and giving back to the community and also bringing board level attention, right? So part of our sessions as well is uh, why it is very important is A, it helps you guys to understand where the curve is. Remember one thing, if if you guys are not ready, who is impacted the most? If the senior management is impacted, right? Because they don't have resources or sources through which I can get clients or wow the customers. Yeah, so Joby Kuch, right? So it's not only one way for you, but it is both way. Right? If you seek the next technology, which means India on business island, if you really think, really at a high level. As a Pune community, Pune is lagging far behind in security than other cities and therefore our job obviously is that with Cyberprat and other communities to build more awareness in security, right? More in technology frontiers, we do lack a lot of uh, uh, high skilled employees and therefore we have to hunt in Bangalore, mainly in Bangalore and Mumbai and Hyderabad, some of those locations. So we are building communities. So when, and these issues we come to know because we are the guys who are hiring. 
So we interview a lot of people throughout the day, right? We have hundreds of people working in security teams. So we do have that issues as well. So we are, as a community, I think you need to be all connected and share your best practices, learn from it, and we will have uh, or take some of, you know, as you said, some of those sessions on ML and other technologies that would help us collectively. So, any questions still now? Any more questions, guys? Any? Just throw any random question. Yeah. What do you think so that uh, going up everything is better to be a limited for it? Limited approach. So, for example, I am good at it. So, security, I am good at physical security. So, an organization can use my credentials, my credibility, my experience, and some sort of legal. So that that part, the initial part, which you discuss about value addition. Right. I can add more value to that to that particular contribution which I will be auditing for a particular organization. Right. Instead of covering the whole scope of the basket, for example, covering all controls of the right, right, right. Definitely, yes, what Smith said, 
it's not only the big fours uh, or the big guns that we work with. In fact, we work with Smith, right? He's quite a promising guy in terms of, and, and guys like him. We uh, work with a lot of small business people who, who, who actually had value in the business. See, for us, that's what I'm coming to, that a lot of companies, if I give it to a company, right? So I know that person's mindset is, it's quite limited. Right? But if I give it somebody like Smith who works as a consultant, freelancer, or he knows that if I don't bring value, I'm not going to build the credibility. So we work with people like him to build, and he will add much, much, much more value. So my team would also know that I work with a lot of freelancers, a lot of uh, company owners, and a lot of small, small time. Come, I've seen somebody from Barutra as well, right? A lot of guys from Barutra consulting somebody. Yeah, you right. So Kishore, right? So Kishore, when he was a consultant, first project he did with me. So, so the point was he wanted to work with people who can add more value in the system. So that's what the point is, right? So collaboration, uh, understanding the customer's technology play, as I was saying, and how it creates competitive advantage. Any more questions here? Uh, one more point. Yeah. 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 Bare minimum, 
and how we have done is we have done unified compliance. So we have mapped one control to multiple standards. So one bar me sare certification khatam ho jaate. Second thing is out of the checklist we try to bring value. So wo to karo, bare bare minimum hai, aur uske upar bhi karo. Not only like stick to the checklist. That is by default. That is by default. It has to be there. Okay. Round of applause for Mr. Sanjay.